Hi everyone, so today we're starting up on what I expect will be the most dense portion of this course and that's the Mozart material. It's going to be broken into multiple parts just to make it uh, more easily digestible. Today we're going to be doing some background work on the Mozart family and then we're going to dive into the period of his life spent in Salzburg. Next time we're going to look at his time in Vienna and the end of Mozart's life. And finally we're going to have a video, a separate video, about Mozart's musical style and contributions. Just to resituate ourselves as we start off with this new composer bio, the classical period is 1750 to 1825, as I'm sure you well know. Here's a po portrait of Mozart. You'll notice his dates here. Uh, they're 1756 to 1791. Now, given that the classical era is 1750 to 1825, we can do some simple maths and recognize that Mozart lived exclusively within the classical period. He wasn't a Baroque to classical transitional guy, and he wasn't a classical to romantic transitional guy. He was a strictly classical composer. Now, if you haven't already, I'd really recommend that you watch this film called Amadeus. It's, you know, wildly inaccurate in terms of its historical facts, but I, I think it really does give you a nice sense of uh, what it felt like to be in the era. Mozart was born in this Austrian city called Salzburg, and the city, uh, its roots can be traced back to the Neolithic age. Today its city center is an UNESCO World Heritage Site, and that's due greatly to its incredible Baroque architecture. I'm not going to be getting into Salzburg's history right now, it doesn't really uh, matter too much for this biography, but I think it is worth you giving the Wikipedia page a bit of a skim just to contextualize Mozart's life. Well, Wolfgang was the son of Leopold and Anna Maria Mozart. Leopold was himself a skilled musician who worked as a violinist, a court musician, a composer, and he also wrote an important work regarding violin performance called A Treatise on the fundamental principles of violin playing. He was maybe obviously thrilled when he discovered that his two living children, uh, five, five of his other children had died, uh, but he, he discovered that these two living children were very musically gifted. At this point, it's, it's important to note that Mozart had an older sister nicknamed Nannerl who was a talented keyboard player in her own right, and we'll touch back on her here and there as we go on. But back to Wolfgang. He is the prototypical wunderkind, uh, the platonic ideal of a prodigy. He was just massively talented right from the get-go, and his dad recognized this. Leopold started to teach Wolfgang from just this insanely young age, and, and Wolfgang started composing music somewhere between the ages of four and five. Beyond composing, Wolfgang was also a virtuoso harpsichordist, pianist, organist, and violinist. Because of this musical prowess, I guess Leopold figured that he should monetize it, and Wolfgang and his sister starred being sent on tours around Europe. At six years old, Wolfgang plays for Empress Maria Theresa, and at eight years old, he makes the acquaintance of one J.C., not J.S., J.C. Bach, who ends up becoming this major influence on the young Mozart. I should note that these tours weren't exactly sexy affairs. This was legitimate work, and the Mozart family endured some pretty dreadful illnesses, bad travel conditions, that kind of thing. This was really tough work, especially for two young kids. You'll sort of see if you dive into Mozart's life that while Wolfgang's sister, Nannerl, had an okay relationship with Leopold, it doesn't appear, and you know there's some differing historical opinion on this, but it doesn't appear that Wolfgang and his dad uh, got along all that great as time went on. At the age of 12... Mozart writes this opera called La Finta Simplice, or The Fake Innocent. Well, the RCM 
in, in the text for this course says that this was Mozart's first opera, but frankly, that's just wrong. It, it completely incorrect. His first opera was this opera called Apollo et Hyacinthus, and he composed it when he was 11. This was a Latin opera. Now, I have no idea who's fact-checking this stuff at the RCM, but this is a pretty easy Google search to debunk. So as I've noted in the top left corner of your screen, the Salzburg period runs from 1769 to 1781. In 1769, Mozart gets his appointment as concertmaster in the Salzburg court, which is where his dad was working. However, this was an unpaid position, which I guess was sort of the aristocratic version of your payment is the experience. I guess musicians have been dealing with this for hundreds of years. Now, we start having more issues with wh whoever it is at the RCM who's fact-checking. The book says, and, and this is what I put on the screen because it's what the book says, that in 1771, this guy named Hieronymus von Colorado is elected Prince Archbishop of Salzburg. However, he didn't. He got elected in 1772 from what I can tell. And this book also seems to imply that Colorado begins to pay Mozart a salary. Um, so not just this unpaid internship kind of thing, but he starts paying him a salary in 1771. But from what I've researched, that only really starts happening in 1773. Either way, the dates don't maybe don't matter that much. Mozart is working in the Salzburg court um, during this period. But, you know, things start to get pretty sour between him and his employer, Colorado. And Mozart ends up getting fired or dismissed and, and <laughs> bizarrely ends up getting hired again at a later date. Mozart goes on three long and important visits to Italy during this period where he gets the chance to give a bunch of concerts, write a lot of operas, which, as I'm sure you know, is a major part of Mozart's work. He also picks up a diploma from the Academia Philharmonica in Bologna and one from the Academia Philharmonica in Verona while he's at it in Italy. And Mozart's touring isn't limited to just Italy, but also he explores Munich, Augsburg, Mannheim, Paris. Well, in Paris in 1778, his mother dies suddenly, also in Paris with him. And frankly, they weren't really sure why it was undiagnosed. Then we come to this other error in the RCM text. The RCM says that in 1779, Mozart's, and I quote, passion for opera is fueled after the success of Idomeneo in Munich. End quote. However, again, easy Google search. Easy Google search. The only... Uh, the, 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 this thing was only premiered in 1781, not 1779, two years later, 1781. So I have no idea what the RCM is going on about, you know, be, feel free to, to, to trust neither of us, do your own research. I really encourage you that these videos are really meant off as a as jumping off point into your research. So, you know, go, go do your own studies on this and see what you come up with. Anyways, in 1781, uh, things are getting real sour with Colorado again. That was that employer where he got dismissed and then rehired. And, you know, so 1781, he's trying to get fired again, or he's trying to quit rather, but he's not allowed to. Uh, a month after this attempt, he, he is actually allowed to quit, but is dismissed by being literally kicked in the butt by the Archbishop Steward. And that's it for part one of these Mozart bio lectures. So uh, please... Make sure to stay tuned for the next one. Consider subscribing and throwing up a uh, thumbs up, please. Thank you.